guys, it's Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and I'm here for my March update, um, March 2024. Today is April the 4th, uh, Thursday, April the 4th, 2024, and I'm just going to go over what I've stitched through the March and what I've done through March and have I have some really great stitching stars, but the best thing about this video is a brand new stitching stand that I have that is from my friend Joni's husband, who um, Dave, who is a woodworker and he is now retired and I asked him to collaborate with me to come up with this, my ultimate stitching stand because I have a lot of stands and he did so and I can't wait to share with you this great tool that now that I finally have and I've put all my other stands away for it. So I'm gonna share with you the stand in this video as well. So, and then at the end we'll have our my, you know, pictures of my family that we've done the last, um, the last month and probably pictures of my, I talked about my, um, stitching wall and we created, we painted our living room and all of that. And I don't think that I shared with you the stitching wall completed last time and it's all complete. And I, I'll share pictures of that too at the end. So if you like looking at my family and the pictures and stuff that we've done over the last month, stay tuned because that'll be at the end of the video. Okay, so first let's go over what I have stitched this last month, which has not been very much because um, I've been very, very busy with a lot of things. A lot of things. Um, I am um, going to be a grandmother, so I'm trying to make um, some things for my daughter for the baby burp rags and, and blankets and such. And uh, one of the biggest things was I was gonna try to make a, a baptismal gown. And I think I've almost, after spending quite a lot of money on gathering things, I've almost talked myself into giving that thought up and just buying a handmade one from somebody that knows what they're doing. I just, um, I've just kind of made myself sick about it. Um, and I don't, I don't need any more pressure on myself in my life than what I already have. But since um, I am also the altar flower lady at church, um, Easter season is a huge season of flowers and I am totally very busy with flowers. I have to change flowers every week and not just one or two pick, you know, one or two vases. It's a lot of vases of flat pots of flowers in church for the next six weeks until Ascension Sunday. And, um, so I've got that going on and I am still the funeral luncheon, um, lady at, or the bereavement, I guess that's what fancy people call it. Bereave, I call it the funeral luncheon lady, but it's actually a bereavement luncheon person. And, um, I've, I've been begging for help and I finally have some help. I have my first funeral or not a first funeral, but. I have a uh, funeral this luncheon this Saturday and next Saturday, and um, I've called upon the people that have said that they would help me, and they have all thrown their hat in the ring to help me, so I have a lot of new people coming to help me on Saturday at the funeral luncheon. I'm very blessed and happy, um, thankful that there's been people that are going to help me um, more than, more many more hands than what I've had before ever, and so... That's great. I've been doing funeral lunches for um, 18 years since Ellie was a baby and a totally rewarding ministry. It used to be a very vibrant community and um, about 10 years, it was kind of all dumped in my lap because people, um, you know, moved for retirement, passed away, was no, you know, aged out, was no longer able to do it. And um, it kind of got dumped in my lap. And I, I, I have a, a very... I'm from a, a, a smaller church. And so 
I've been doing it basically myself, cooking and doing everything. I've had a few people help me, a few small, very generous hands help me, but I need more people. And um, with my becoming a grandmother, and I'm going to be the babysitter, the primary babysitter, Monday through Friday. So um, I need help because, you know, funerals are not planned. And um, death is unexpected and unplanned. And so because of the nature of that, I can't just drop everything and run to do a funeral luncheon now that I'm going to be responsible for taking care of a child. And so I need more help. And so luckily people are helping. So anyways, long story short, all of that, sorry, got into that, but all of that to say, I have not stitched very much and I have really got to get stitching on one thing in particularly because at the beginning of next month, I need to have this finished and framed. And that is um, M's Designs letter J. I will put a picture of it in right here. Letter J. This is for Joseph, which is Ellie's boyfriend. His birthday is May the 8th, so I need to have it done by May the 8th. I am stitching this with Old Crow Belle Soir by Classic Color Works. And once I sit down and really get tr going, because this is the center of the J right here. So I only have this much down there to finish. So I don't really have that much. I just need to, I just need to find some time. Time to sit down and not think about anything else except crossing some X's. So... That's M Designs letter J for Joseph. And um, I need that done and framed by May the 8th. I have the frame and the glass and everything already. So it's just a matter of getting that stitched and I'll get on it. So the next thing is, is that I started on the leap year for the leap year sal stitch along. I started, has it been that long ago? February 28th. I guess so. My time flies. So February 28th for the Leap Year Stitch Along, I started the um, Treasures and Needlework Santa Claus. This is also, it's called, it's also been found in many renditions. Other videos I've shared with you where all, where you can find it at. But this is um, Santa's Wish List. I'm stitching mine on 28 count Vintage Country Mocha 2 over 2 using DMC. This um, magazine is summer 1992. It can be found in that. can also be found in a couple of issues of Better Homes and Gardens books and magazines. Like I said, look on my other videos to find. It's also a, a Jan Lynn kit. You can find it several ways, but it's old. It's an old one. It's from the 90s. So, so there you go. 80s and 90s is when this was popular. So my start is right here. That was one day's worth of stitching, and I really stitched a lot, and that was on leap, the leap year day. So I guess that was, what, February 28th or 29th? 29th. And um, so there you go. That's my start. So I'm stitching it, like I said, on 28-count vintage country mocha. Now, I'm going to tell you something. These berries, I really want them to be dimensional. So if you can see how they kind of pop off the fabric, I stitched those with um, three strands. So, <laughs> which people are probably thinking, why did you do that? <laughs> I just wanted them to look, I just wanted them kind of to pop. And they do, they really do pop. So I stitched the berries with three strands and um, everything else is with just, you know, regular two strands. But I wanted the berries to be like, be a little bit more pop, you know, pop off the, the fabric and I think it does it very hey, look it does it really nicely anyway so that's my start on Santa's wish <laughs> Santa's wish list and let me just mention I guess I'd said I was going to put my um Santa all my pieces in a uh a pillowcase in one of my videos because I was telling you all about how I had dirt on my um, Santa of the Forest, and Artie, the vintage stitcher, made me a pillowcase for my Santa. So thank you, Artie. Much appreciated. I've got my Santa in my pillowcase, my Santa pillowcase. And I believe, 
This is Jim Shore fabric, and I love Jim Shore. So there you go. All right, the next thing I started was, and I don't, this is not a very good start either. I, I haven't stitched very much, but I was the finisher for this um, piece from Hobby House Press or Hobby House Needleworks. And it she it's a so far she has three pieces released. It is the this, which is the um, spool, the scissors spool, scissors holder spool. She has a drum and she has a mattress pin cushion. And I was the finisher for all of those pieces. And um, there's been many questions. Sorry, there's been many questions about how to finish these things. And so I'm stitching them myself so that I can make a video and a written tutorial and um, put them, put it up for people. But so this is the first one, uh, Mary Alcorn, I believe. Yeah, Mary Alcorn 1764 from Hobby House Press. And there is my start on that. I'm stitching it on 40 count linen, which I think is a legacy linen. I don't know, sorry. But um, you get all of this only from, as far as I know, only from Hobby House Press. Just give them, they're on the website, go to the website, do exactly what I did. I went to the website, I ordered the stuff, and they sent it to me. So there you go. Mary Alcorn, the scissors spool, right there. Got to get on that so that I can get tutorials done of all the three pieces eventually. Um, Time. I just need time. Does anybody know how to get a lot of that? Okay, so the next thing I started was I've, I've been on a real ADD stitching time, but I have a really good idea about this piece and pieces to come. This is the Mirabilia um, Baby Angel piece. I will put it in right here. Okay, that's beautiful. And I'm stitching it, here it is, I'm stitching it on the platinum, everything called for. I think this is the platinum Zweigart linen, two over two DMC, this is my start. Okay, now then, here is what I'm thinking about doing. So we don't know what the baby is. Um, Katie's pregnant, she is due July 19th. She went for her ultrasound to determine, you know, health. And, and one of the things that they were going to do is find out what the sex of the baby is. The baby kept its legs crossed and its hands in front of its face. The entire, they kept her for two, for two appointment times. So for an hour, they worked with her and the baby never uncrossed its legs and just briefly put its hands down to where it was sucking its fingers so that they could get the, the, the space, the, the measurements for the eye space and all of that that they do for, um, to determine, you know, Down syndrome status and health and stuff of the baby in the ultrasound. The baby had its hands like this <laughs> and its legs crossed the entire hour. She will not have another ultrasound because she's doing very, very well in her pregnancy. So she won't have another ultrasound and we do not know what the sex of the baby is. And I guess we won't know the sex of the baby until it makes its appearance. So she's doing well. Any of you that would love to pray or would like to pray for her, I would certainly appreciate it. My pregnancies, none of them were good. I had all of my pregnancies were premature pregnancies. All of my babies were premature. Not bad. They None of them had to be intubated or anything like that, but they were all born at 34 weeks, except for Ellie. Ellie was born at 36 weeks, but I had been on bed rest with her from the time that I was 18 weeks pregnant until she came at 36 weeks. That was 18 weeks of being on bed rest and mm, not good. Anyways, 
I never had very good pregnancies and so far she has done very good. She is 25 weeks along right now, doing great. But my idea is, is that I stitch these for every grandchild and change the color of the baby's outfit to match whatever the sex of the baby is. So, you know, like blue would be boy, pink. I could do red for a boy or purple or, you know, whatever, change this color for the, each baby and put their the name and their birth date at the bottom and then frame it and have it going, each one framed as they come along, framed and going down my stairs or all group. I think I want it going down my stairs in my room. I think that that would be really cute for a grandma to have <laughs> little angel babies all the way down, um, all framed for each one of, of their children. That's what my thoughts are. That's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. And even if this baby is a girl, I'm just gonna use blue because I mean, I wear blue and I'm a girl. So anyways, that's what my plan is, I think. I don't know, I have a lot of plans. and But there it is, Mir uh, Mirabilia's freebie. It's a freebie, so go to their website and um, get this free if you would like it. You just put in Mirabilia free charts and it comes right up. And um, so that's my that's my plans. I really, look at that little baby face. There, I just, Nora Corbett and her mother, Marilyn Levitt Emblem are just fantastic artists, in my opinion. And the stitching, the, when you're doing the stitching, the chart, looking at the chart is one thing and looking at the cover, photo of the chart is another thing, but when you're actually doing it and stitching it yourself, it's just like, as it comes to life, it's just like mind blowing how beautiful it is. It's, I mean, it's true art, honestly, and um, just gorgeous. So anyways, that's what my plan is. I plan on doing one of these for every one of my grandkids right now. We'll see if that all comes to fruition. I don't know if it will or if it won't. All right, so the next thing is, uh, Teresa Colgate gave a freebie out. Teresa Colgate, very generous, gave this freebie. You, you can find it on her Instagram or just Google Teresa Colgate freebie and it'll come up. And this was my stunning start on Easter. He. <laughs> he. That's it. That is the, that's it. That's all the stitching I did. <laughs> But I did talk to you about doing um, some things for my grandbaby, my future grandbaby, and so I'll show you what I did. I made some burp rags, and I've got a whole bunch more burp rags cut out. But I'm making these for my house and Katie's house because since I'm gonna be the grand, the grandbaby watcher, I'm, I'm gonna make half for my house and half for her house so we don't have to worry about hauling that every every time but um so i have these cut out and ready to sew these are very easy to do and somebody asked well where did you come up with the pattern i came up with a pattern in my head i just drew it out on paper and um did it but what my um burp rags rags are comprised of is it's flannel on the front on the front and then on the back i just have quilting cotton and then in the middle is a piece of terry cloth for absorbency. So I just bought terry cloth and um, I bought some terry cloth and put that in the middle for absorbency. And um, we're cat people, so that's why we have a cat. A cat one. I got, well, we got a couple of cat ones. I forgot. A couple of cat ones. And then um, Katie is doing her nursery in uh, forest theme and adventure theme. I think I have a picture of it. I'll put it in right here if I do. So I did some animals. I don't know. I mean, there's bears there and foxes and then 
zebras and giraffes. I don't know why zebras and giraffes would be in the forest, but they were with the foxes and the bears, and so I bought them to do. And then I got um, various other ones. That's all. I've only done six of them so far, but I've got various other themes. This one was really cute. And um, so there's another one that's really, really cute. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. This one. Isn't that darling? So anyways, I've got all these cut out for burp rags. And really, honestly, I think they're probably cheaper than what you could buy them already made. Although, I mean, by the time you buy the terry cloth and all the fabrics and all that stuff, it, I mean, it wasn't cheap by any stretch of the imagination. But I think it was like $70 for all of this. And that's not really bad. If, and I'm, these are like 35 35 burp cloth. So, and then I'm going to make some, uh, whoops, I'm going to make some of those uh, flannel and cotton blankets. Uh, there's a name for them. Self-binding, I think it's self-binding receiving blankets. And you do flannel, you can do it flannel on both sides or flannel and cotton. And I think I'm going to do mine flannel on one side and cotton on the other, just so that for, cause it's gonna be born in July, it's gonna be hot. So I got some of this uh, flannel. I thought this was so cute. It's a, it's got little forest animals on it. So I got this flannel and I have to get a backing, cotton backing for it. I just bought this to, um, and then I'm going to match the cottons for it. I got this. This is actually, oh no, this is flannel too. S'mores. You can't have an adventure without s'mores. At least in this family, you can't. And so uh, I got a s'mores flannel. And then this, she does, now she doesn't know. She knows about the burp rags. She has not seen, and she doesn't watch these videos, so it doesn't matter. But she has not seen this, but there we're all about going to national parks and we're trying to like visit all the national parks um, as through our as a bucket list. I probably won't get to all the national parks because I don't like to fly, so I won't be going to Hawaii. But um, and there's one up in Michigan you have to either kayak to or or seaplane get to, I think. It's an island and up by in Michigan somewhere. I am. I won't be doing that because I'm not going to kayak and I'm. I'm not going to go on a seaplane. But anyways, I found this national park flannel. I was like, oh, I have to do that. So I got the national park flannel. I love that. And um, then I got this. This is a cotton, but I thought this was so freaking cute. With little, we don't have campers, but we do tent camp on occasion. So got that. And this is a cotton which matches, kind of matches some of the other flannels that I have. But I'll just get a flannel one for that. So, so I got like what? One, two, three, four, about five receive, five or six receiving blankets to make. I've got a lot of sewing ahead of me. That's why another reason why I don't know that I'm gonna like do the baptismal gown. I had grand illusions about the baptismal gown, but I've had a lot of anxiety about it. And um, I don't know that that anxiety is worth it. So I think I might be giving it up and just buying a, a baptismal gown. So anyways, that is what I've done. Now we are going to insert the video about Dave's stitching stand right here. All right, now we're in the part of the video that I'm going to share with you a new stitching tool that I collaborated with my friend Joni's husband, Dave, who just retired and who is a, a woodworker. I needed a new lap stand because the one that I used the most, I have just worn out basically. And it had gotten to the point where it just wasn't working the way it had used to work because I just frankly had worn it out. So I 
collaborated with Dave. I asked him, would you be interested in making a stitching stand? And he said, sure. And we began to collaborate to make what I would consider my ultimate, <laughs> my ultimate stitch stand that addressed every issue that I had in any lap stand, any floor stand, any stand that I own. Dave has addressed and even made it more better, you know, more better than, um, than what I even thought that I wanted. You know, he's even added things that I wouldn't have even thought about. So I want to address, I want to um, introduce you to Dave's, I don't know what he's going to call it, if it's Dave's ultimate stitch stand or the ultimate stitching stand or whatever, but this is a, this is a lap and table stand. It can be used on your lap. It can be used on a table and it's made out of oak with walnut inlays. You can see there's walnut inlays here, walnut inlays there, and a walnut decorative piece right here. It is beautifully stained oak and sealed um, with a, a finish. And I'm assuming that it's a matte varnish finish, but I don't know that for a fact, but I would say that that's what it is. It has a, a universal arms that will accept anything that you stitch with. It will hold scroll rods, it will hold Q-snaps, it will hold a, a stitching hoop, whatever that you use to stitch with, if you use something to hold your pieces. Now, if you stitch in hand, of course, you won't need a stand. But if you stitch with a Q-snap, a hoop, a scroll rod, whatever, it accepts it, it is universal. You don't have to buy any kind of thing to, to make it take a Q-snap. You don't have to buy any attachments to make it take a scroll rod or a hoop. It is universal in the fact that it will accept anything that you use to stitch with that ho to hold your fabric. It will accept it just by these arms and the little pegs that hold the, the Q-snap scroll rod or hoop. It has a tilt feature with I love and I wanted because I prefer to stitch with my pieces close to me. I have been using lap stands or stitching stands, let's say, because I have floor stands, lap stands, table stands. I have it all. Clamp stands. I have all the stands. I have a lot of stands. And why I have so many is, is that the first one I purchased, I loved for many, many years. And then as I changed, um, there was some drawbacks with that one. I had a needlework system for floor stand. That was my very first one. I bought it 20 years ago and it is still as good as what I bought it, but it um, it's just not usable if you wanna put your feet up in a recliner or if you're sitting in a recliner that has a bar in the front, you can't, cause it has, it has a, bar that goes under your chair. So even though that stand is still perfectly usable, I don't like it anymore because my stitching setup is different. As the years have gone by, I have really turned more and more and more to lap or table stands because I sit back in my recliner with my feet up and I can set my lap stand right on my thighs on my lap and um, stitch away. So I have gone to basically using, I've put all my, all my stands up and I have a lot of them. I put them all up because this has addressed every issue I had. This is the best lap stand I have, the best stitching stand period that I have ever used. And it's because I collaborated with Dave and told him what all my issues were with all the many different stands that I had. So let's go through some of the things that he addressed and solved. The first thing is, and this is a whole game changer, I cannot begin to tell you how awesome this is, is that I prefer my stitching close to my body. The reason is, is that, the reason I even began using stitching stands, period, is, is that I had severe pain and inflammation in my right arm, my, basically, yeah, my right arm, my shoulder, my elbow, and my wrist. And the reason was, is because, of how I stitched and I held my Q-snap or scroll rod or hoop and I would pull it and go down the and so I was always constantly moving my arm in this 
position. I had tennis elbow and tennis shoulder, I guess. And I had to go to an orthopedist because I was in I was in pain constantly every day. And I had a baby at that time and I could hardly pick her up with my right arm, which is my dominant arm, because of the pain and inflammation and, and swelling that I had in this arm. And so I went to an orthopedist to figure out what was the problem and soon we figured out it was me stitching. And so I, what he told me to give up stitching to quit stitching. And I wasn't gonna do that. And I didn't wanna have surgery. So I started exploring stitching stands and teaching myself how to stitch two-handed. So that's how we got to where I am going, I, where I stitch with a stand. It's not because I like to have a bunch of paraphernalia as I see on threads. A lot of people say, oh, people like to buy a bunch of stuff and all you need is needle thread and a piece of fabric and a pattern. And that's true. That's true for some of us and, and good for you if that's all you need. But in order for me to stitch comfortably, I have to have a stand of some sort. And this stand addresses every issue, everything that I have had a problem with. Um, it's all addressed in this stand. And the best thing is, is that, like I said, I like my work close to my body and I like it at a tilt. And I don't, I mean, yes, these arms will tilt, but I want the whole base of the stand to tilt. And I told that to Dave and he got came up with this idea of putting these great feet on the bottom. They have some grippiness to them because this is like a, a soft rubber, whereas this is more of a molded rubber. My hair is in the way, sorry. More of a molded rubber, but um, these tilt, and I will show you in my close-up video how they come out very easily and how you can adjust the tilt because I will be honest with you, I really like a kind of a severe tilt and I didn't know that I liked a severe, that severe of a tilt until I had this stand and I used it at a very severe tilt. And when I say severe tilt, I just mean that these, I can adjust this screw, this top screw to make it the tilt that I want. And um, I, that is something that I didn't ask Dave for. I just asked for like a 45 degree tilt or a 30 degree tilt. And that's what he gave me with this. This is just this um, alone. These feet alone is about a, a 25 to 30 degree tilt. But I can make it even more severe than a more, more severe of a t tilt. And I absolutely, I absolutely love it. It's a, it's a real game changer. So, they went be above and beyond my ask for a, t a tilt. And these, um, so these feet also move in, you know, 360 degree movement. So you can, it'll fit against any surface that you set it on. Okay, so the tilt, that's, that's huge for me. They also don't, you can take the, you can take these feet out and you don't have to use them. This walnut, decorative walnut piece is just decorative to hide the screw that holds this to the lap stand. And if you don't want the tilt, you just take this all off and it lays flat. I will show you that in the other video where you'll be on the boom arm and you're looking down. Okay, so the first thing that he addressed was the tilt. Totally fantastic, huge game changer. I would have been in love with it with just that. But I also told him that the other stands that I had that was like a universal acceptance, you know, like it universally, you could use universally any kind of thing that you stitched with. They all had something on it that, um, that would hold these arms that would be above the arms so that when you placed your stitching, your stitching, I'm, I'm tearing everything up. When you would place your stitching on the arms, it would like have a bump. And although it was okay, it just kind of was irritating but I said I wanted one that was just flat that I didn't have to have any kind of bump on it. And the two stands that I had that were that would were universal had something that distorted the linen um, somewhere, you know, if it was way up high or whatever, somewhere it distorted it. Dave answered that by creating these arms that were held at the bottom because this is all smooth now, no bumps. So that he improved that. Excellent. Besides the tilt, the number one thing that Dave fixed that is a total wonderful, wonderful thing is, is that 
his arms, his up arms here are in the shape of a U and the arm fits in the middle of this U. And what that does is it affects effectively makes it unable that these will not move at all. And I'm, I'm pulling pretty hard and it's not moving at all. I mean, well, and the reason I didn't want them to move is, is that I, I rest my dominant, my non-dominant arm, the arm that's on top of the stitching against these arms. And as you, I would stitch these arms on my other stands would just slowly start going down, 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 down. These no, I have stitched with this for probably eight to 10 hours and um, never had to stop and, and readjust the angle or anything because these arms are solid. Now then, they're also fully adjustable as far as um, what angle you want them. And also if you want, you know, like, so I stitch with my pieces close to me, you can move these however far away or close that you want them. So that's another thing that I didn't ask for that Dave gave me. Totally love that. These arms are, let me measure them. These arms are 16 inches. And that to me is a good, um, cause he asked me how long I wanted the arms. And I said, well, if you get much over 16 or 18 inches, you can't see the television. <laughs> so I wanted to be able to see the television. So they're um, just 16 inches tall. I don't know why you would need one taller than that, but it's, it's 16 inches tall. So that's what the arms are. I talked about the, the total close or fast are close or far away. Um, also, another great thing is, is that he made, and let me get these loose so that I can show you. He made this track. This is a metal track. Oh, it's so fantastic. It's a metal track that goes the entire width, besides this like inch on the end, the entire width of this stand. So, it goes all the way to the right and all the way to the left. So if you want to stitch on the left, you can stitch on the left. If you want to stitch on the right, you can stitch on the right. If you want to stitch in the middle, however you want to, to get the perfect width of the arms, totally, totally customizable um, for your stitching experience. So I guess that pretty much it tells you everything I want about the stand. Um, my biggest issue with all the other stands that I had, like I said, was I like, I want to tilt. I never had a tilt tilt on any of my stands. Um, the one lap stand, and I prefer to stitch on lap stands rather than floor stands. And um, the lap stands that I had, I had rigged it up. My husband had rigged it up by... <laughs> Stacking non-skid uh, chair cushions, you know, like you put on the bottom of your, if you have, uh, we have wood floors, and if you put them on the bottom of your chairs, they are on the legs of your chairs and they won't move like in your recliner or whatever. When you get up and down, they won't, they're, they're non-skid. And so he had a stack of about six of them and he had put them <laughs> on the back like that so it had a tilt. That was our answer our rigged up answer of how to make how i could get a, a stand with a tilt i had that on two different two different stands so the biggest thing for me that was a huge accomplishment was the the tilt uh, being able to adjust my tilt of the of the stand however i want and the arms not moving the arms not moving and the tilt are and then the not having the bump on, on your linen, you know, from the upright arms. That was huge. Um, the whole width of the stand, being able to have a track that goes all across the stand. I've not had a stand that does that. I've had a stand that, I've had a couple of stands that have tracks, but they only have short span tracks, not all the way across to where you can adjust it however you want to stitch. You know, if I'm stitching something smaller, 
or even larger and I want to stitch, I, I, some, I set in my, in my seat differently. So sometimes I'll set closer to the right, sometimes I'll set closer to the left and being able to adjust these arms however I want them, you know, that's huge. So he's really addressed a lot of things um, that I didn't even know I had issue with. And then the things that I did have issue wish, with, he completely fixed and even improved upon what I said I wanted. So it is just a knock out of the ballpark, this stand. It is made again of oak with walnut inlays and a walnut decorative knob here for the um, to hide the screws. It's a fantastic stand. And I asked Dave just this morning, he is willing to sell these, um, make and sell these custom for you. So he doesn't have like any made or anything like that. You just have to place an order, um, contact him and place an order with him. His email is, it's all about the wood 56 at gmail.com. I will hopefully have this uh, email across the screen and in the drop down box. If you are wanting to talk to him about pricing and um, turnaround time and all of that, if you wanna buy one of these stands, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're having problems, if you're having pain with your arm because of stitching, this certainly takes all of the the wear and tear out of the body. I'm, I mean, it's just fantastic. I will show you later. I don't have it up here, but I will show you later. I stitch with this all the time, just sitting on my lap. But I also have um, a thing that I've used with other stitch stands that I do use um, to put my stitch stand on just because then I can it's just easier to like pick up and place on the table next to me when I have to go to the bathroom or get up from stitching. And um, I will show you that, I'll go get it and show it to you later. But this can be used with on the table or on your lap. I also have used it uh, recently with a, um, I have a roll around, uh, I guess you would call it a, a computer table or a bedside table that will has rollers and you can roll it up next to your chair, it's, you know, that's nice to, to use it with. I've set at the dining room table with this. I'm setting it here with it on, on my desk. It's, it can be used on the tabletop. It can be used on your lap. You can put a pillow on your lap if you don't want it against your knees, a flat pillow. You can, I mean, there's just a towel. You can use, do all, whatever you want to, however you want to use it. This is just a great, it just has really been a great, stand and I've had a lot of fun like collaborating with Dave coming up with this stand and I and it he has totally addressed every issue that I had and like I said I own a lot of stands and this is the best one I put all of them away because this stand answered every one of my problems that I had um, with my other stands. And I used to rotate through all my stands and now I don't have to so I don't have all that stuff. So not to mention is it made well, but it's actually very beautiful. And um, I had a lady come in to visit me the other day and she was like, what is that? That's so pretty. Did your husband make that? And I said, no, my husband didn't, but my friend's husband did. And it's like a, it's almost, I mean, it's like a, a beautiful piece of wood. It's a beautiful piece of furniture that you can have setting out. And my stitching area is in my living room. So anybody that comes to my home will see it. And I don't have to be embarrassed about it because it's honestly a very beautiful piece of almost like furniture in my home. And um, it displays my stitching beautifully too when I, you know, because I always have my stitching laying on it. And um, it, you know, it, it beautifully displays my stitching when I'm not stitching on it. Um, did I say that it's not very heavy? It's not very heavy. I would say five pounds probably. It's not, it's definitely not as heavy as a 10 pound bag of potatoes. So I would say that it's probably in, in the range of five to 10 pounds, I would say. I don't know, I haven't weighed it. But a beautiful piece. If you would be interested in purchasing a stand from Dave, just please email him at it's all about the wood 56 at gmail.com. All right, that's my cell. I'm going to put in a video right now of it from above that kind of demonstrates how I stitch, how it came to me in the box, how you take it apart, how you put it together, all the kind of ins and outs of this stand. I'll put this in right now.
Hi, this is Vana, and I'm going to give you an overhead view of Dave's stitch stand, how it comes to you in the box, and how easy it is to assemble. And once you assemble it, then if you are going on vacation, or you're going on a stitching retreat, or whatever, how easy it is to disassemble, to take with you um, when you travel. So let's get started. All right, so when it comes to you, it each one of these pieces will be wrapped and um, you can unwrap them and then put it all together very easily. So here's the tracks. You would just take the knob off of the track screws like that. And then you would take one of the arms, and of course you want the arms, you want these knobs to be on the outside. So this would be the left one, and this one would be the right one. You know, so the knobs are gonna be on the outside, so you're just gonna place those arms on to the track screws, okay? Then you take your knobs and you tighten them down. Okay, so there we go. I haven't tightened them down tight, but so they're still moving, but you tighten them down tight when you're stitching. Okay, so the arms would come with a knob and the screw, and there's washers on each side. So when you add your arm to the upstand, you wanna make sure that this washer that's right here, that you don't lose that. So you're gonna take that off, that washer off. And then you're gonna add your arm. And your arms are exactly the same, so there's no left or right. You're gonna put the screw through the slot. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta take this screw out. And then once it's, um, once it's into this side of the arm, you just push this down in, and then you're gonna thread your screw through that so it moves up and down. There is a square to the, the, the screw head. So you wanna make sure that you hit the screw head, press that in, so that should be flush. And then you're gonna add your washer and your knob to the other side. That's it. Okay. So there's one side done. Let's do this side. Again, we're gonna take this knob off. We're going to get rid of our washer right here. The screw, see right there, I'm gonna put it into this side of the arm so it doesn't scratch the wood. Put it down and then you're gonna just thread that screw back. Again, this screw has a square he head to it, so you wanna make sure that you get that flush into the hole like that so it's flush. It's easy to do, it's just hard to do it on camera. Add your washer and your knob. And that's that, so there your stand is assembled. Now then, let me show you on the bottom what is unique to this stand. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and take these arms off. Because when I was collaborating with Dave to make this stand, I asked him, could he make it tilt? Because I like to really use, um, I really like to have my stitching close to my body when I'm stitching. I like it close to me. And um, lap stands that are flat, sometimes I don't feel like I can get the tilt right or the angle right for the way I 
for, I mean, just for my comfort. It's not really has anything to do with the way I stitch. It's just for my comfort. I like my needlework to be tilted and close to my body. So I asked Dave, could he come up with an idea to make it tilt? And these little knobs right here, these little pieces of wood are decorative items out of walnut because the stitch stand is made out of oak. But he has beautiful walnut inlays and this one of this piece of wood is walnut, and it's to hide the screw for these great feet that he has that will make it tilt. Now then, the nice thing about these feet are is that they're soft, I mean, they're hard plastic up here, but they're soft and grippy on the bottom, so they would be soft against your legs if you're gonna use this as a lap stand which I do and I don't have any problems, but I'll show you later on in the video what I have sitting on my lap when I use my lap stands. I'll show you about that. But anyways, so these feet come out like this. Let me show you. It's a long screw here. So, so if you don't like the tilt, you can remove these and it's no big deal at all. It does not affect the use of the, of the, lap stand at all. I don't know if he's going to offer it without the tilt, but honestly, I feel like any stitcher, this adds a great deal, in my opinion, a great, great deal to my, in my opinion, um, for the stitcher. So here's the, the feet off. What is, and I'll show you that it sets flat. So see, no movement, no problem at all. This is completely flat lap stand without the feet if you if that would be your preference but in my mind and I have a lot of stands in my mind these things are like a game changer totally a game changer for me because I, like I said I like my work tilted towards me now then what is great about Dave's feet is is that you can see that these completely move to any angle to fit any angle that you want to hold on to the flat surface. But what is really great about this is that he includes this screw so you can get any any angle that you want on the piece. So let's say that I want it really tilted. I'm gonna move that screw up to that position and then screw this in. Totally customizable. That's what's so great about this. Totally customizable. And all you do is you want to make sure that that screw is flush against the, um, the bottom of the lap stand. Once I get this screwed in, I'll show you. Okay, so fully customizable. I want it, let's say I want it at that angle. So there you go, that's the angle. And if you would have, so that you can visualize, so let's say that this arm was attached, so that's that's the angle. I, I totally, I mean, it's. can I just say, let me just sh look at you. Can I just say that that is a total game changer? <laughs> that is one thing on any of my stands, and I have a lot of stands, a lot. That is one thing on any of my stands that is totally mind-blowing. It is a true, true game changer, these feet. I, when I said I wanted it to tilt, and he came up with that idea, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It was, that's a small addition makes a great big difference. In my mind, that's what I think. Well, again, I've stitched on a lot of stands. I own a lot of stands. So, the feet and these and and how he how he you know hides the screw with this piece this what this walnut piece absolutely great. Let's say okay I don't want it, I don't want it that that much of an angle. So again, what you would do is just move this screw down like that to the let's you know to whatever angle. Let's put it back down to the lowest. But but really I stitch mine with I stitch it at quite a I have a quite a big angle on it when I stitch. Love it. 
but I'm gonna move it on down to the lowest setting for both of them. Just so that you can see that it's just fully customizable, so easy, so well made, so well thought out. It's just absolutely, I, I just can't get, a, honestly, when it arrived a week ago, I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Okay, so there we are at the original angle, the lowest angle that you can go. I'm going to add my arms back on. Whoops. Okay, so the arms are on. Now I don't have them tied down, that's why they're moving. But again, let's show, they, these are go around, let me move this out of the way. Goes around 360 degrees, let me loosen this. 360 degrees, however, however you want it, up and down the track. It goes up and down the track, up and down the track. Anyway, you want to stitch on the left-hand side, stitch on the left-hand side. You want to stitch down here on the right-hand side, stitch on the right-hand side. You got a really long project. Whoop, there you go. It goes, let me see how far this is from, from edge of arm to edge of arm, just for grins and giggles. Let me tighten that down. Let me get my ruler here. So the span is basically 20, uh, let's see. It is, oh, that's number one. It is basically 24 inches from edge of, of the arm to the other edge of the arm. So a 24 inch span, huge, great, great amount of, great amount and any, and any, amount in between there. The lowest, let's see what the lowest. The lowest width is, would be probably this, I think. Well, no, maybe not. Let me see. What, what, let's see. Nose to nose here. Didn't think about this, but nose to nose here. What is the width? Let's see. It is um, eight and a half inches. Eight and a half inches from edge of arm to edge of arm, this space. Now then, let's just see what's the opening. That would be a seven inch, about a seven inch. Seven and a quarter inch, but right between here. But from here to here is eight inch, eight and a half inches. Okay, but let's see. I think maybe you can get them closer. Let's see. Because it does, these are all flat, so it doesn't matter which way you have them facing. Of course, you'd have to change the angle if you wanted them with the oh, and I, oh, so that so you could. I mean, the knobs are in the way. I wouldn't do this personally. I don't know why you would need one that little, but I guess if you were stitching on some a hoop that was very very little, you could get it almost to this. Let's see what the width is here. Well, let me. You'd have to change the arms to be this way, or I guess you could sit, you could put the feet off, take the feet off if you didn't want the angle, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to see what the width is here. Let's get them right butt up right next to each other. So the width is, where's my want number one? The width is four and a half and about three and a quarter. That's the smallest width you can get. Okay, so there we go. Little science project about how wide and how little you can have your pieces or have your spans. Any, any size would work because, you know, it's just laying on the pegs on the arms, the peg arms. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how a, a Q-snap works. So I have it set up, 
cue snap on. Okay, so the, I would stitch two-handed. My non-dominant hand is on the top and my dominant hand is on the bottom. So um, I'm not stitching, but to just show you, it goes down and up. I never turn my needle, so I just go down and up. That's how I stitch, like that, okay? All right, so there it is with the cue snap. Okay, so I'm gonna move it around, very sturdy. So you can like move it, get up and down, and it stays on the pegs of the arms, very nice. Again, you can do any angle with your arms. Let me take this off so that I can show you. Any angle, if you wanna stitch with it flat, you can stitch with it flat. How, what, any angle. Also, another thing is, is you can stitch with, the, with it very close to you if you want it up a little bit. Like, let's say a lot of times I will be stitching up here and up at the top and I want it closer to me so I would have it in the lower position. When I get down here to the bottom, I don't want to re-hoop it or re-move my uh, scroll rods or move my uh, cue snaps so you can just move the arms up. So this fully customizable, fully, fully, um, To you, fully customizable to you. Okay, moves all along. Okay, so I'm gonna just put those down. Okay, so another thing that I would like to say is, is when I stitch, no matter what, if I'm stitching with a, scr a scroll rod or a hoop or a, a Q snap or whatever, but when I stitch, a lot of times I will lean my arm on my non dominant arm on on the arms of the stitch stand and so in my other stands that I have eventually they move because they only are on one they only had the up arms only have the up arms and a screw okay with this oh it's just, I, this is another revolutionary thing that, that I said that I wanted in a stitch stand and Dave came up with. So the arms are in the shape of a U. And because of that, because of that, that squeezes, when you screw this together, that squeezes this and this does not move at all. I have stitched for at least eight hours straight on this stitch stand and never once did I have to stop and retighten and readjust this because the arm had fallen, not once. And that is something that is a flaw in my mind in every stand that I own. So that was fixed. That was fixed by Dave in this stand. That was another one of the things that I asked for. Okay, the other thing is, is that I stitch on predominantly is roller frames. I have information on roller frames on my blog. Again, my blog is The Twisted Stitcher at blogspot.com. If you just put in Google or really any engine, put Vana Pfeiffer or Vana or The Twisted Stitcher, my blog will come up. But I have information in the um, tabs on the top about roller frames. If you want some roller frames, they're only available through a dealer, not through the company themselves. So a dealer of roller frames that I get all of my roller frames from is The Shepherd's Needle. And at The Shepherd's Needle or her assistants, Sherry and the other ladies that work there will be happy to guide you in what you need if you don't know exactly what you want or what sizes you want, just call the Shepherd's Needle and they'll be happy to help you and get that going. They're hard to find sometimes. They, they can't keep them in stock. So um, just be patient because the Roller Frame Man, the guy that owns the company is Dan and he is a, it's a family owned business and it is ran by himself and his wife and um, he works as hard as he can. I think he has hired a helper though, but um, you know, it's a handmade product in the USA and just be patient because they try to get them as fast as they can. So let's talk about if I, when I load my roller frame. Now it would be fine at the width that it is here, but I really, what I like to do is I like to get my uh, roller frames right in the corner of the up bars and the rods. So I would just simply, you can see all I did was 
unscrew it and I'm screwing it in again, tightening it down. And it doesn't take a lot of, it doesn't take a lot of hand strength. And believe me, I have hand strength issues because of my joint issues. So, um, very easy to get started. I have it snugged up right along the edge of the sidebars. And again, I would just stitch along. So there is a demo. It is, like I said, this is sitting on a table. I can't really share with you what it looks like when it sets on my lap, but I can tell you that it sets. Let me try to see if I can. It sets easily on my lap. Um, it set, I mean, it's just a great product. Um, I will share with you when we go to the other part of this to, sh to show you like straight on instead of overhead so you can see more of a of a 3D, like what it looks like when it's sitting on your table or on your lap. Um, I'll share with you what I use um, with my lap stands that I've had for several years. I will show you what I use um, with that when we come back from the other video. So here we are. That's how I use it with roller frames, with Q-snaps. If I had a hoop, I would show you, but it would work with a hoop. Um, so just a very universal stand that everything works. You don't have to get any kind of head adjustments. You don't have to get any add-on features. This is just a one-time purchase and it fits all your needs. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. This is what I set on my lap and I use with my lap stands. Um, it actually doesn't set on my lap. It actually rests on the armrests of my chair, but um, it is made out of bamboo, so very lightweight. It has those handles and I just set my lap stand right on there. It actually came with those black straps that are elastic bands and I actually can put the edge of my lap stands in there. And so then when I get up, to go to the restroom, I just, or to do whatever, I just pick everything up, including that lap stand, and then place it on that table right there. So, um, this is my stitching area. It's messy. Don't look at it too much. But I do want to sit, show you my wall in live time since we talked about that. That is my stitching wall. Let's go through it a little bit closer. So um, in the top right, that's a Brenda Gervais old, old sampler pattern. Um, so upper right is Brenda Gervais. It's that one right there in the corner. The middle is Little House Needleworks Needleworker. That is Little House Needleworks. Um, I don't know what that's named. AB, it's alphabet something. Um, the two middle there, the Blackbird Inn and the Red Rooster Inn are both Little House Needleworks. The middle one is Orchard Valley Quilting, Quilting Bee, which is Little House Needleworks. That is by Jan Alexander in uh, Beauty and Grace Abound. And I can't think of what her name, what her design company is, but that's by Jan Alexander but she got married, so it's not Alexander anymore. So sorry, I'm just not very good. Those are both told in the garden by Marilyn Levitt Emblem. And the stitching Stitcher's Prayer is, again, by Little House Needleworks. Okay, so then there is my Santa in the garden. Doesn't he, or Santa in the garden. <laughs> my Santa of the forest. Look at him. Isn't he stunning? Oh, I think he's so handsome. There's my Santa of the Forest, again, by Marilyn Levitt Emblem. And then we'll go over here to this side. And we'll start again in the upper right. That is Sarah Seifker, um by Kathy Barrick, I think. It's either Kathy Barrick or The Good Huss Wife. Then we have, um, that's by Blackbird Designs. I don't know what the name of the pattern is. That is by Little House Needleworks. That is another Brenda Gervais pattern, which was an exclusive and limited, I believe. That is Little House Needleworks. Um, Melissa Turner is the name of that sampler. It's a reproduction. That is Prairie Schoolers, um, When Witches Go Riding. And the mat in the frame was by... Uh, Oh, 
Oh, she's the one that does all the framing. Rinsel Studios. That is Low How Rose, and it's by Bright Needle, and it was in a Christmas book by Better Homes and Gardens. That's um, by Primberry Lane, Pineberry Lane, Pineberry Lane. That's Blackbird Design, and that's the Easter Parade. That's Not Forgotten Farm, and that's Thomas. That is in the Bee Man's Garden, and that is by The Good Huswife. And State Fair is by Little House Needleworks. And The Bunny is by Brenda Gervais. I see I missed this one. And that is a, uh, oh gosh, I can see her. Uh, it was in a magazine, Diane Gravener, and it's called Picking Apples. All right. So there is my stitch wall that my husband and I created one day. And there's my family. That's my family people over there. Jacob on the end, Ian and Camden, me and Keith, Joseph and Ellie, and Katie and Austin. So again, this is a bamboo lap tray. That's how you would find it. If you just Google on Amazon or search on Amazon, that's where I got it. All right. And I know they still have them because I looked. Just search bamboo lap tray. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. All right. It's time for stitching stars. Okay. So our first stitching star is um, Cheryl. And she sent me, she told me that she had this and it was from one of the tri, um, Treasures and Needlework magazines that I said that, oh, I would want to stitch this one. Well, she sent me a picture of hers that she stitched and I'm going to put it in right here. She says that she stitched it 30 years ago. There's a lot of back stitch, and um, but it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, who wouldn't want that? I don't know. It's gorgeous. So thanks, Cheryl, for sharing that with me. Absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know what the name of that pattern is, but it's in Treasures and Needlework, and I think it's like Christmas. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's in Treasures and Needlework, out of print. It's beautiful. Then the next one, the next stitching star is Amy. And Amy stitched, oh, this is so fantastic. I have this started and um, I have not finished it. Oh, it's so beautiful. Anyways, it is Our Lady of Guadalupe and it's by Joan Elliott. It is a kit that I got it, I think, um, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby at some time. But anyways, it's a by Joan, you can find it. Joan, Joan Elliott, Our Lady of Guadalupe, here is her finish. It is stunning right here. Doesn't that make you want to like, well, it makes me want to go get that and stitch that up. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Amy, gorgeous. All right, my next stitching star is da -da 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 -da. Angie, who is also known as um, Bub Mai. And she stitched this for her son for his 24th birthday. Here she is with her son right here. In that, I, I, it struck me. I, that, that's, it just struck me when I saw it. And it is Guitar Sunset, Guitar Sunset by Artisy. 
Good job, Angie. It is, I, I had never seen that before. And since that time, I've seen like a couple people finish it. <laughs> but Angie's, I love that. Um, I love her fabric. And it's a picture that's plus, I'm almost certain. And it is gorgeous. That is a go gorgeous piece. So anyways, Angie, good job. All right, the next one is, the next one is, um, the next person that is our stitching star this month is Sully Stitches, and she stitched Teresa Kogut's, um, I think it's called Let Love Rain. Look at this. beautiful. Those, that is a stench, a stench. That is a stitch dense project and it is absolutely gorgeous. Good job, Tara. Tara of Sully Stitches. Beautiful. The next one is Feather Stitching, which is a lady by the name of Anne who is in Australia. And I have followed Anne for years and years and years. Back when everybody had blogs, she was a blog that I never read, I never missed. Her name, her blog's name was Feather Stitching, and her Instagram handle is Feather Stitching. And she finished um, Rosewood Manor's Quaker Diamonds. Look at this. I have that going. That's a whip somewhere in my life, in my whip things. <laughs> and that is absolutely stunning. Good job, Anne. Gorgeous. Anne recently um, bought her own home. So congratulations, Anne. I love watching you move in and set up your new home. I love, I love, I'm just so happy for you. The next person is samplers and santas marley of sampler and santas look at this finish this is two by julia from the shakespeare's peddler and um, there's two of them. I'm going, and I only showed the first one because I just I like houses. And um, but it's two by Julia from Shakespeare's Peddler. They were both done on Picture This Plus Ale, and you can find Marley on Instagram as Samplers and Santas, all one word. She is a gem, a beautiful stitcher. The next. Stitching star is Patty Stitches. And I'm going to tell you what, this is so, so doggone cute. <coughs> right here is Prairie Schoolers Rabbit. Right here is Prairie Schoolers Rabbit Folk. Check this out. Now you tell me that ain't cute. That is adorable. Good job, Patty. Uh-oh, the next stitching star is Pam by Stitching Between the Lines, one of my favorite, favorite floss tubes. If you're not watching Stitching Between the Lines, Pam, you need to get on over there and watch Pam. She's just my kind of person. Just tells it like it is, no nonsense. I'm all about Pam. Anyways, she finished Kingdom of Books.
first of all, Pam finishes such big, intricate projects. And I've told her that once, and she goes, there's no intricate to it. It's just X's. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> to me, big, huge, beautiful projects. Kingdom of Books. Check this out. Isn't that stunning? Isn't that stunning? I couldn't believe how I, mm, great. All right, next one, Stitches with Andrew. Check this out. That is Red Cardinals by Al Forest Embroidery. Red Cardinals by Al Ford Forest Embroidery. Really like that one. Good job, Andrew. All right, next. This is another one of my, mm, I really like this one. Here it is right here. That is by Arlene Grimm, and it is Plum Street Samplers Summer Moon. Have that pattern? Not started, just have it. Love it. Okay. The next one that I'm going to show is, ah, sorry, I'm getting all choked up. I'm getting all choked up about the stitching stars. <laughs> the next one is by Boone country stitcher susan check out this cute cute i love these it's actually following or seeing this is what introduced me to this <clears throat> stitchy girl by Teresa kogan right here So that one was My Heart is Fed with Needle and Thread. I loved it. The next one is um, by her, again, Boone Country Stitcher. And it's the one that says, <clears throat> I promise, I think. It's a stitchy girl. It's the second stitchy girl. But it's called The Needle Worker's Oath right here. And there was a freebie from the needlework market that Teresa gave out to shops when the, that attended. And so you might want to check with your shop, but it's another one. I don't have a picture of that one, but it's the third Stitchy Girl, and it was a freebie at Nashville. Needless to say, folks, I got, I purchased all of those because that's why. So Great job. Love it. Beautiful. Great. <clears throat> the next one is by Gabrielle Stitches. So Gabrielle Stitched and Finished Harriet Salt, which is a Bristol sampler by Hands Across the Samplers or Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Harriet Salt. Check this finish out right here. Not only is that a beautiful sampler, but Gabrielle's picture setup of that, stunning. Um, Gabrielle says that, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm getting so choked up. Gabrielle says that she's now framed 
her her Harriet Salt. It was found in, a, or it's framed in an antique frame that they found thrifting for $20 and her husband cut it down to resize it to fit Harriet. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning, Gabrielle. Great job. The next one right here. That is finished by Melody Thomas or Mel Thomas 33 on Instagram. She finished Rose Hill Farm <clears throat> by Oh, Rose Hill Farm Sampler by Stacy Nash. That was cute as can be. All right, next one is, oh, not my stitch, but this is by Annabella's Needle Art. It's called Prim Stitch This Little Light of Mine right here. I did not even know about that these patterns existed. And as soon as I opened Julianne's package and saw this, I was like, and <clears throat> so guess who owns this now? Me. And I will definitely be stitching that sometime. I love, I absolutely love, I absolutely love it. So great job, Julianne. So uh, I framed it for Julianne. It's under museum glass. And um, I think that the black frame that I chose to stitch it with looks really great. So <clears throat> there you go. This Little Light of Mine by Annabella's. All right, the next one <clears throat> is by Wendy at Thread Tales on Instagram. And it is Blackbird Designs Humming of the Bees. Check this out. Isn't that, pre I mean, it's beautiful. Really, really like it. Great job, Wendy. <clears throat> the next one. Oh, this is a good one. <clears throat> this one's by Kimberly of Kimberly Stitching, Kimberly's Stitching on Instagram. And it is <clears throat> Pansy, uh, Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. And it's the Houses on Peppermint Lane, all on one piece of fabric. Check this out. Not only is that a whole lot of stitching, but... It is, I mean, that is one commitment right there. That is a lot of stitching. And Kimberly, it is gorgeous. Great job. <clears throat> so happy that you got it done. <clears throat> I think I'm going to do one more for this time, and then I'm going to stop because I've got tons more. But we're going to stop with this one, and this is by Brenda Holzman. She's a friend of mine on in in Instagram, and her Instagram name is Brenda Holzman. And look at this idea. It is, I love, I, I love this. Mm, I really like it a lot. And I, I hate to always, I hate to like copy people, <laughs> but I might be copying you, Brenda. Check this out. This is a display that she brings out every year, she says, and it's um, Julie Bean Jubilee by Brenda Gervais. Look at this. Now, you tell me that ain't cute as a button. I've been using the word ain't a lot today. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Great job, Brenda. All right, so that's 
all of the stitching for, stars for March. Tune back in on April to see who is in April's stitching stars. So until that time, when I come back, which I'm going to come back in at the beginning of May or end of April sometime, I hope I have a lot of stitching to share with you because I sure didn't have that much this month around. But until the time when I come back, please keep a smile in your heart and one on your face and you just can't go wrong. So until the next time, bye-bye.